Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Think on These Things podcast. Back for round two. Today, yeah. we're going to be uh, talking about the second half. Oh, shucks. Last time we were recording, and we got a new recording set up. And in doing that, uh, we lost like probably half of our podcast. Yeah. Probably a good yeah, half of our we podcast. Did. Yeah. And it was probably the best content, which is oh, sad too. Yeah. So, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to jump right into the second half. I'm kind of going to let my wife take that away. So, honey, take us away. Yeah. So, um, in cancel culture part one, we were talking about. Um, cancel culture on a on a grand scale, like what we're seeing in our society today. And um, then we start talking about it, cancel culture in the church. And actually, we heard a lot of feedback from all of you um, since we actually posted that last week. Yeah, of, it was pretty popular. Yes, just some of you saying, sharing your experience, um, saying that you have experienced what, what it feels like to be canceled and um honestly i think all of us have felt that to some degree um in varying degrees some people have experienced it on a wide scale yeah um and some people you know it how it feels to be what like canceled maybe by individual or a few people yeah yeah and you know too it, it's kind of one of those things that um uh, sometimes it's an, if it is a minister, sometimes it's an organizational level. Yeah. Um, if it's a individual, sometimes it's a church level. Um, but it, it doesn't detract from the fact that it ha- it does happen. Um, and and so what we're trying to do is trying to we're not trying to tell people they're right or they're wrong. Um, right. cause that's not our, that's not our job on think on these things. But what we are trying to do is trying to get people to think about why they felt that way in the first place or yeah. um, why is it <laughs> it's kind of well tell me how you feel well why do you think you feel that way oh sure does that make sense like because yeah. that's the thing sometimes our sometimes our emotions can really skew our our logic and um, and sometimes we can get mad we can be upset there's a whole bunch of things that we can be yeah. and if we're not careful what we'll do is we'll we'll instead of logically pacing through things and trying to understand the other side sometimes we'll just write it off and stop it dead center yeah and I think just saying this before we go into cancel culture on an individual level is that our our purpose here is to um, encourage our yeah. fellow believers. Yes. But it, through that encouragement is ask questions, <clears throat> ask challenging questions that maybe you ask of yourself and yeah. you ask about what's happening around you. Right. Because questions are not um, a bitter <laughs> vendetta against anyone. Questions are simply... Nor are they wrong. Right. Questions yeah. are simply challenging the thought process because that's how we we learn. I think about our four year old daughter. Hmm. Her Dear ab- God in heaven. I I mean Let's talk about questions. It's gotta be like The other day, this is how bad. This is how many questions hundreds. she has. The other day I go, Oh, daddy's got a headache. She said, Dad, you know why I what do you know why you got a headache? I said, Why? She said, Because I asked so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes because literally we've got to the place where we're like viv no more questions sweetie let's just calm yeah. down for a little while Dad, yeah mom, we need a break it, yes and so like with this with this particular topic it's you know it I, it brings up questions like you know how can we how can we get along better with those that we disagree with like what's a way that we can move forward without compromising our beliefs but also like not saying okay you're canceled you no longer have a place in this movement or in my life anymore and like those are the kinds of questions that we're yeah. trying to facilitate through our podcast and because I think they they deserve consideration yeah exactly they do deserve consideration um and and, and one of the reasons why they deserve consideration is um because sometimes what we'll do is we'll equate tradition to doctrine yeah. Um, and that's not necessarily the case. Right. And, and, and what, one of the things that we're going to find in this century and moving forward from here is that we're going to have people that are not going to think the way we think or yes. believe the way we believe or grew up the way we grew up. And in those times, we're going to have to be able to 
um, look at everything objectively yes. and say, okay, um, why does this make me feel this way? Yes. Um, because I've had to do that with my own self. I've had right. to look back over my life and say, am I so staunch on this because it is in the Bible? Sure. Or am I so staunch on this because it's how I grew up and it's what I was taught? And, and we just have to kind of, we have to be able to pace through that. It's good to ask questions because what questions will lead you to answers and answers will lead you to a greater belief. Because here's the thing, the truth that, that the apostolic church preaches and teaches is true. Yes. It's 100% biblical and it cannot be argued, but questioning with the right, um, oversight, let me put it like that. Yes. The right mentor, the right person speaking yes. into your life and prayer. Yes. Because the reason you need to look at the Bible through the lens of prayer is that God will, the, the, the spirit will never contradict the word and the word will never contradict the spirit. So what I think what we have to do is make sure that if we're asking those questions yes. that we're pacing through the word of God yes. and we're saying, okay, this is what I think this means because I've had to do that and I've texted leaders in my life. I've got mentors. three main leaders in my life, yes. the mentors in my life. And I text them and one in particular was like, I don't think that's it. Yeah. Great. And I'm like, okay, Love cool. Well, so let's move on to the next thing and I'll keep on studying because we need that. We need to be yeah, able to hear. Definitely. Uh, it's not right. Definitely. And it's okay. Definitely. Well, and so I think in considering, um, cancel culture on, on an individual level, um, cause this is where we kind of left off last time yeah. of what it means for an individual like what headspace are we in where are we at where is our spirit at um when we approach someone and we're just like they're canceled yeah. they're done hmm. you know i'm they, done with you yeah yeah where, where are they at and then what we're seeing in a society and then what we've even seen in our, our movement is that sometimes individuals that decide that a person is canceled, they will um, solicit other individuals to jump yeah. in with them and, That's a good point. and help them cancel yeah. this person. Yeah. And so kind of jumping into the psychology of, of this, um, some would say that what's rooted in cancel culture is what would be termed as supremacy and my husband was like can you can you please pick a pick another term <laughs> well um, and <laughs> let me defend myself a little bit there um it, when i say supremacy it's a hot button topic over the last three to four years and we equate it, it to white supremacy right and that's not that what we're not, talking about we're, we're talking she's, it's related but that's not what we're talking about well it's the supremacy of idea right in this, in this context yes yeah or some would call it elitist yep. um we're not talking about white people no right we're now. talking about yes. ideas and concepts a, a supremacy of idea yes and so uh, kind of a related term with that would be um superiority okay there you go, yeah. superiority and so uh rooted in this is the individual believing um that their ideas that they are and it's actually become very individualistic not just that their ideas right. are um superior but that they themselves are superior and that's extremely dangerous especially for a christian believing that your ideas your ideas not the ideas of the word of god your ideas are superior and um i don't know how many of you are familiar with carl carl young um but his idea um his psychological principle of um what would be termed the shadow is extremely related to this some would believe no that what you're talking about some, Just keep going some some would believe that that supremacy is rooted in what would be termed um the shadow and and what that is is man's denial of um unconscious ideas and things that are are actually rooted in them mm -hmm. and they are projecting that onto another person and i believe um that in in some ways that could be really related to biblical principles because you know the bible talks about how our heart is is wicked it's desperately wicked about, yeah. and who can know yeah 
our true selves. And so when you talk about this idea of supremacy or superiority, believing that your idea is, or that you yourself are superior, um, it's almost, it's almost like what the word of God talks about a denial of seeing ourselves for who we really are. Yeah. And the Bible says that, you know, we are wicked. There's nothing good in us yeah. that it's Christ righteousness mm -hmm. that that brings us into right relationship with him. And so taking on this idea in the church of cancel culture and superiority really is is putting us in a position of idolizing our own ideas idolizing our own stance mm -hmm. and it can be it can be a really dangerous position to be in yeah uh whenever we feel like we're the moral authority um and yes. the judge of those things then we're, we're we're treading on dangerous ground because and here, here's why um from a biblical concept or from a big biblical context we are not created to be judges because as my wife just said um we're wicked uh, there, there's no good thing in us. Um, one of the greatest apostles said that he's the chief sinner. Uh, David, you know, and send in my mother, or in iniquity did my mother conceive me, and, and, and so on and so forth. And yes. You know, I think the problem that we, that we have is that whenever we'll idolize ourselves and we'll place ourselves on a pedestal, even, um, even if we don't mean to do that, it will happen. Um, and truthfully, eh, Isaiah is where yeah. it goes back to. Yeah. Um, it's because we view the teachings, the doctrines, um, and, and the law, if I can be so pointed and we view those things and we're living them out. And because we're living them out, we can judge those that aren't living it out. Yeah. Um, and it's not good. Yeah. Because what we do is we, we, we make ourselves the, the judge and we cannot be that because there is but one sinless, righteous being, which is God. And that is the, it's just the same, the same reason that only God could die for our sins is the same reason that we cannot judge others because we ourselves are wicked and unrighteous. And if it wasn't for his blood, we couldn't even get close to him. And I think that's the thing that we have to remember is yeah. that we can't, we can't do, we, and, and here's the thing too, we're talking about ideas and concepts that should, that, that can be debated. Right. Of course. Um, we're not talking about science. Like salvation. Yes. yes. Yeah. We're, and, 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 and we're also not even talking about sci like scientific things that, um, that data would prove or disprove. Right? right. Because you can't debate data like right. data. When data happens, it happens. And you're going to let your data tell you the answer. Um, when it comes to the Bible, there are things in there that you can debate. Sure. Um, like my wife just said, you can't debate salvation or the oneness of God or holiness, a lifestyle, both inward and out. Um, there are some things in there that are very cut and dry, but there's just some things that we can debate and we can talk about. Yeah. Um, and I hope we can get into it. Um, one day, I hope that the church world could be to the place where just because we don't agree doesn't mean we can't get along. That's right. Well, and it's so funny when you think about scripture and you think about, I mean, I've heard so many preachers uh, like preach about this. We think about the religious elite of the day and how many people they, they canceled how many people just weren't even good enough to be in their presence and how Jesus, those were the people that he ministered to and we not just ministered to, but called to follow him, called to follow him. Yeah. And, um, what a crew he had. And, and we, I, I've heard it preached. I've heard ministers talk about it, but then application of, of modern times what yeah. what's stopping us from from ministering to those people? Why do we? Mm -hmm. Why is it that we feel we must cancel or, them or ostracize them or um, mm -hmm. take a stance where we feel like though they're not as good as we are? Yeah, yeah. Or or two, especially even when they're among our ranks, 
in our churches. Um, yep. You know, yep. we feel like we can't minister to them. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough thing. So bringing that back around to psychological principle. So my question is, is if we feel like we need to cancel someone or we feel like, you know, this person is just, we're just done with them. So what is it that they believe or what is it that they're doing? What is it bringing up in us? Oh boy. That, because that's where, where the shadow and what's, what would be our, our heart, our deceitful heart come into play. Yeah. What kind of feelings is that bringing up in us? What, what has been your past experience, yeah. your present experience? What, why is this? I, I've seen people just go off on people about certain things. So as a therapist, I would say, what, what is triggering you about that person's beliefs and that person's choices? What is it that's, that's bringing you to that, that space? Does that make sense? It does. It does. Why don't you unpack it a little bit more? Like yeah. Be a little bit more specific as like maybe give an example. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Tell us an example of what could happen. Um, not that not, maybe not something you've seen necessarily, but like what could like as far as canceling what in my past could lead me to cancel someone today? Sure. Okay. In the context of what we're talking about. Yeah, I'll, I just want to use a vague example because I don't want to use the I don't want to use the wrong example. But okay, so say so say uh, uh, maybe two ministers disagree on on something, and one of the ministers gets really up gets really upset, and um, he solicits you know other ministers. And lets them know what's going on. And they decide to cancel this person. Well, the person that led, kind of led that charge. So the disagreement, I guess unpacking that would be, well, first of all, examine why is this making you so mad? Get past kind of the the superiority part of um, they're, they're, I'm on a charge for the word of God or I'm on this. Because we're not talking about disagreement over biblical foundations here we're talking about areas that can be debated so are is your pride wounded is your ego wounded because someone would dare question you mm. or did you have an experience in the past where you've where you've um experienced something similar and it didn't turn out well something related um are you um unable to uh, answer questions because you feel maybe weak on your or position. You feel challenged. You feel challenged. Yeah, how dare um, you challenge me? How dare you challenge me? Yeah. Um uh, because we this was many this was many podcasts ago now, but this was an extremely uh, popular one. It was a two part our two part narcissism uh, series that we did um, with Pastor Nathaniel Urshan and we talked about Shout that out to the goat. that culture of how People may not be a narcissist, but they have narcissistic tendencies. And we see that um, somewhat um, it can be demonstrated in leader culture yeah. where no one can challenge you. No one can question you mm -hmm. because of a deep insecurity within yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that's extremely narcissistic. It's challenging your false front. Yeah. And, and, you know, while you, were th while you were talking about that, I started thinking, too, about how that we can disagree with one minister and then we'll write off an entire organization. Yeah. Um, you know, Over generalization. Yeah. Yeah. What it, it's it's uh, it, it is. And I don't want to get into politics, but the liberal ideology of group think yeah. if you're in this group, you must think this way. And what we do is we apply that to apostolic people. And we say, well, this person's there, so they must be X, Y, and Z. Um, and I don't think that everybody thinks that, for sure. Um, yeah. But I do think there are some that believe if you have a certain card or you do a certain thing, then you're, you're X, Y, or Z. And, and the danger in that is we can miss some good apostolic brothers and sisters. Yes. Um, and <laughs> we can also link up with some terrible ones just because they carry the same card. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, and, and, and we can apply that to the church, right? We could say, well, just because 
they drive a 95 Honda Accord. They must be X, Y, or Z. Or they wear such and such, so they must be X, Y, and Z. And, and the problem with painting people with that broad a brush is you are going to miss out on some of the best relationships you could ever have and some of the most growing relationships you could ever have. Yeah. Because those people can help you grow. Well, that's a great, that's a great point because um, this is from my personal uh, counseling experience. I would say that based on an experience with a few, um, you know, pastors or ministers, some people paint with a really broad brush and cancel out all pastors all pastors are controlling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All pastors are abusive. That's a good all point. ministry That's is a good point. Um, corrupt. All ministry talk is about this. that for a minute. Ugh. Yeah, because because of a bad experience. It oh, and I listen. I think everyone. I don't really need to qualify this. I don't think um, because each experience is individualized. But but some people have these experiences and they paint you know, ministry a certain way. And there's a flip side and I'll talk about that in a minute. There's a flip side, but they'll paint a pastor or a minister a certain way without trying to achieve what I would term like a 360 perspective on that. They're, they've got a rigid idea of what's happened. And instead of trying to understand what the other people involved were thinking or feeling, um, they're like, no, this is what happened. Yeah. I'm right. Mm. And then what we do is we assign thoughts and intent yeah. to other people, which we've talked about assigning intent. Go ahead and say your quote there. That quote that you I think oh. said that Carrie Newhoff one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh shoot. We judge people by our action. We judge ourselves by our actions. Wait, no, we judge other people by their actions, but we judge ourselves by our intentions. Yes. And so we we assign we assign a moral judgment on yeah. other people's actions when we could have misinterpreted yeah. the context. Well, not of just that. yes, yes. And, and then what we do after that, um, and I'm sorry if I'm moving too far ahead, but then we look. Then we have confirmation bias. Yeah, everywhere we look, you know. Oh, same, oh, they're the same way. And what we do is we, y'all, and I've seen this happen so much. Then what we do is we start grouping up with people that feel the exact oh, same way. Gosh, yeah. We start seeking out, you know, Those other negative people, people who have had, you know, a bad experience and yes. we surround ourselves with, um, bitterness yeah. and, um, that's all we put into our ear because we don't want to hear. That's why we're encouraging on this podcast. You got to question. You got to think about things. You've got to examine. Examine you, yourself and yes, others. You've got to have mentors that really can speak into your life and ask questions. Yes, like, ask questions. Don't be afraid to reach back to a person that that you canceled and say, "Hey, here's what happened. Here's how I perceived it. Help me understand." Absolutely. Because you know how much clarity will come from that. We 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 what we want to do is we want to we want to get on our righteous high horse and we want to sit there instead of coming down off of that and having the conversation that could fix it all. Yeah. Because what you're gonna the vast majority of the time. Now I'm not gonna say every time, but the vast majority of the time, what you're gonna find is that that person did not mean to make you feel the way you felt because of what they did. Absolutely. The vast majority of the time. Definitely. And if they found out they made you feel that way, chances are they're going to be very apologetic and yeah. sorry. Yes. Now, there are some that will be like, I'll be honest, we just don't get along. I'll be honest, you've been a pain in my butt. I'll be honest, X, Y, and Z. Now, that's that's the minority of the time. The vast majority of the time, you're going to find that it was miscommunication. Yes. Because here's the thing, and I've said it a billion times, and I'll say it till I die because I made it up and I like it. And I think everybody else should use it too because it's so good. Communication breeds clarity. If there's any ambiguity in the situation, communicate. Yeah. And they'll, then nothing else will be ambiguous. It'll all be clear. Got to communicate. Yeah. And, and so saying on the flip, the flip, the flip of that is that, um, you know, I was talking about people that have perceived, you know, pastors in, ministers to be a certain way and then the flip of that is um sometimes pastors and ministers have 
leaders have perceived the people that they are leading to be a certain way and they've had some yeah. bad experience um, experiences and so they feel they must lead on the defensive because right. I'm not an advocate of the thought of um, which my, my husband is pastor um, I'm not an advocate of the school of thought the saints are out to get you I don't I, I don't I don't believe that way. It's I, don't, not all, I don't. It's not always true, and it's not always false, but it's it's true far less. Than has people there think it is. has there been malevolence? Of course, there has. That's in every um, area of leadership, whether it be leaders or those being led. There can be some malevolence there, some vindictiveness. But as a general rule, do I think saints are out to get the leadership? I. Do not. I believe yeah. if you dig deeper and sometimes you find out their past experiences or you find out what they have been taught by other leaders, yep. um, you will find, um, especially in the apostolic church, people have generally been led by very strong leaders. And if it's been a toxic leadership culture they will carry with them yeah. those characteristics That's true. whether it's you know elitism um you know a superior a holiness superiority of others and you know uh, saints themselves are being led by someone and a lot of times they've picked up that characteristic and then if they go to another church it may seem like oh this person man they're coming against the leadership they're doing this they're doing that and i don't think that they're intentionally, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. That they're intentionally coming after anyone. Yeah. And, and uh, you just got to be careful. Yeah. Just got to be careful. We life, need to wrap up soon. But yes. Yeah. Life circumstances can bring about a desperation and a way of acting. Yeah. That maybe the person did not intend. It's true. That's a good point. Trying to survive. And that can go yeah. for ministers, leaders, saints. Yes. Across the board. Let me tell you, ministers are not above mental health, uh, physical health issues, mental health issues. Yeah. Um, and, you know, growing up in a house where my dad was in physical pain pretty much every day of his life, unless he takes pain medication um, because of a really, really bad back. And, uh, We're going to talk about that. Huh? We're going to talk about that. Well, you know. Um, those things can lead people to behave in ways that probably they wouldn't behave. And I've worked with people that are the same way. Um, yeah. So I think we, we probably need to be very careful of how yeah. we approach and um, don't ascribe intent to actions because you don't know what the intent was. Yeah. Lead us out. Yeah. So we want to hear from you guys. Keep the comments coming. We've yep. loved it. We're getting ready to record another podcast that's going to post next week yep. on um, ways the church can minister better to those who are struggling with mental health issues, ways the church can um, be more friendly mm -hmm. toward mental health in general. Yep. And um, we're going to be posting that next week. Yep. And so we're excited to hear your comments. We're excited to hear your feedback. Catch us on Instagram at yes. Think On These Things Podcast. If you want to send us a question or a comment yep. via text, you can text the word THINK to 910-600-0498 and then text us your question or comment. We love hearing from you guys. All right. As always, it's been a pleasure and you're watching THINK on these things on the Biblos Network.